All right, folks, finally, it took long enough. Uh, former President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama have finally endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris for president. This video dropped this morning on social media at 5 a.m. Kamala. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Oh, hi. You're both together. Oh, it's good to hear you both. I, I, I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle, Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both, and um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the, the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both. It means so much. And, um, and we're going to have some fun with this too, aren't we? All right, folks, let's go to my panel. Michael Imhotep, host of the African History Network show, joining us out of Detroit. Matt Manning, civil rights attorney out of Corpus Christi. Killa Bethea, communication strategist, normally out of D.C., but she's actually here in New Orleans at the National Urban League. All right, um, let's get right into it. Kelly, it took them long enough. Now, all these black folks been mad at me on social media. Oh, it's strategic. You don't know what they're doing. No. Obama came out praising President Joe Biden on Sunday and called for an open convention process. Then you see these stories by saying, well, they didn't want to put their thumbs on the scale. Well, hell, President Clinton, Hillary Clinton had no problem endorsing. So I'm sorry. I, 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 look, I get all that. Damn that. This endorsement should have happened a lot earlier. I completely understand where you're coming from, but I also understand the Obamas in that they have traditionally been very traditional in their in their endorsement style and and strategy. And what I mean by that is typically speaking, since Obama has been on the scene as president, he has not endorsed really anyone until they have officially been the Democratic nominee. So I respected his decision regarding that matter, but these are different times, and uh, Harris needs all the help she can get as soon as she can get it. So I think that message rang loud and clear with the Obama camp, and they acted accordingly, and that's what you see here now. So, you know, we're here now. Let bygones be bygones. The endorsement's there. It's locked. We're loaded. Let's just go. You know what? I, again, I mean, look, I, I get it. I get the whole traditional thing uh, here, Matt, but ain't nothing traditional about uh, this race. Uh, and and I, I just think as all the, uh, the, the potential, uh, of course, um, potential candidates begin to endorse her. Fine. After that all happened on Monday, this should have came on Tuesday. Uh, and you saw what happened by the afternoon on Monday, I believe. Even Nancy Pelosi had to endorse Kamala Harris. Yeah, but I mean, frankly, I think that's kind of much ado about nothing. I think they've come, they've made their endorsement. I think the Democratic Party has to approach this, you know, differently than they would in a normal cycle. However, the Obamas are, are leaders in this party. And as long as the endorsement came and came early enough for it to matter, which is now, I, I think it's enough. I don't know their reasons for withholding that. Um, I did see in the chat somebody said they were calling for an open convention. That may have been their position originally, and that position may have changed. But I did read in, in preparation for the show that they've got a long relationship, I think 20 plus years. There were times where she supported them when he was running for president. He supported her when she was running for attorney general. So rather than guessing, I would say I'm glad they made the endorsement. And I think that that's going to continue to buoy her and her progress forward. Well, that's my point, Michael. If you got a long relationship, damn it, you should have been a lot quicker. Well... You know, one thing I've learned about politics, Roland, is that everything doesn't happen the way you think it's going to happen or on the time frame it's going to happen. You know, people uh, Sunday, people were saying, oh, uh, Senator Schumer and uh, Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries didn't endorse. And then I think it was uh, between Tuesday and Wednesday, they endorsed. They said, oh, Nancy Pelosi didn't endorse. Monday, Nancy Pelosi endorses. Then we see here the uh, Obamas endorse. And 
um, a rather dramatic fashion because it's part of a uh, uh, campaign ad. So now I think it's also important to understand there was bad blood between uh, Obama and Biden because Biden felt uh, Obama was trying to push him out. And yeah, you did have people. And I think Obama was one of them who wanted an open convention, things like this. But what happened Sunday, I, I think Joe Biden really boxed some people out. And I think Joe Biden really changed the game on his way out because 20 minutes after he announced on Sunday, after he announced that he was dropping out of the race. He then endorses Vice President Kamala Harris. She spends 10 hours on the telephones on Sunday calling 100 people, locking in delegate votes. So then all the people who were saying, OK, we need to have an open convention, that's out the window because between Monday and Tuesday, she locked up over 2,500 delegates, pledged delegates. You need 1,976 for the nomination. So now the whole game changed. So even some people who said they want to open convention, they had to concede. So this is good news. This is politics. Um, and it's game on. Bring it. Well, again, <clears throat> glad they finally did it. And I think you're absolutely right. She had it locked up. Uh, definitely by Tuesday. Things are rolling in Monday. I'd rather be uh, at the front of the train than the end of the train. I'm just saying. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it could have came sooner. Fine. They finally got it. Uh, and I certainly hope they're going to be aggressive on the campaign trail out there campaigning Vice President Kamala yeah. Harris. But here's the deal. The, ra the, 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 ra the rally is, Kelly, the momentum. See, this is why I love when regular, ordinary people start taking over. Guess what? The politicians had to catch up. We with black women call uh, on um, Sunday, $45,000, uh, $2 million raise. We with black men, $54,000, $1.4 million raise. Uh, then Tuesday, you had 3,300 Latinas, uh, Latinas on the call. You had 2,500 South Asian women on the call on Wednesday. Nearly 200,000 white women on the call last night. It raised 8.5 million, may hit 10 million. Now you got, uh, of course, you got black gay folk on the call today. You got Gen Z on the call. You got a Howard folks on the call. Uh, you got Michael Skolnick uh, doing white dudes for Harris uh, on the call as well. And so this is this is awesome because this is not driven by the campaign. Yes, Biden made the decision not not to run. He endorsed uh, Kamala Harris, but this is the excitement of people. And that's why I said yesterday, James Carville, shut the hell up about all Democrats, all elated, that's going to go away. No, you ride the way. What did Martin Long say? You ride this sucker until the wheels fall off. That's what you're supposed to do. It is what you're supposed to do. And I, I see the momentum. And all I can say is I hope that it, it continues to move because that's always the the point of contention when it comes to Democrats and our plight to get things moving when excitement can fade. So I understand uh, the the what you said about the other guy who thinks that is going to die off. I don't think it's going to die off. I just want, you know, people to be cautious and keep going, be disciplined in the momentum to keep going. It's not like we raise all this money and we're done. No, like this money is getting spent as we speak. We're going to have to keep donating. We're going to have to keep doing these calls, regular calls, regular donations. That's how this campaign is going to keep moving. That's how we're going to get her into the White House. So that that is that is the point of all of this. It's not about, you know, oh, we got a black woman in there. Let's just get excited. No, she's here to do the work. And we need to put money behind her so she can get into the position for her to do the work. Roland. Curl Prep Natural Hair Solutions at curlprep.com. I'm in shock. For curls, locks, braids, twists, and even those wigs and extensions. Women, men, and children are loving this line. Look at this video and you be the judge. People line up to see this product in action at hair shows, and when they take a seat and try it, they don't believe it's their hair. 
Buy the products at curlprep.com. It works on all hair types. Use code ROLAND, that's R-O-L-A-N-D, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount. Parents, remove the ouch. You will love this system because you can comb the product through your child's hair with your fingers. It's all at curlprep.com. Use code ROLAND, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount.